Hi guys! In this video we will look at how to make form in Webex and also I'll demonstrate different form controls. Webex delivers a variety of controls that can be placed in a form. These controls can be used for entering text, selecting an option, date, color or switching between multi-view cells and plenty more. UI related form inherits from you. It resembles layout very much as it is divided into columns and rows where controls are put. Let's go to our code. Here we have the empty Webex constructor and here we can initialize a form. For that we write view form. Also let's add some width. For example 600. Element is the specific property for the form. It defines an array of controls and control groups. By default elements of the form will be arranged as rows. So as the first element we can add just a simple label with some info about the form. Let's add the simple first name last name inputs. Please pay attention that in order to interact with controls, set get values, validate them. You should specify the name property for each control. It ensures interaction with API. We will look more closely at set get values and validate methods in the future videos. Just to demonstrate, I will set the read only and disable property to true. We can see how that looks. Now let's look at select, combo and rich select. First we will create a simple select with few options. Let's add some cities. Here's how it looks. Combo is a text-like field with a pop-up window that appears as you click on the field. We can initialize it in short form like this. A pop-up displays options for users to select. At the same time, you can edit the text field and the items will be filtered according to the input values. We can also initialize it in long form by adding more properties to options, like this. Or we can add options from server or file, for example like this. And then we have the rich select, a non-editable combo box. The control combines a non-editable text field with a drop-down list of predefined values. In the Webex Pro edition the control can be extended to show either a data view or data table in the pop-up. That way you can redefine drop-down menu of select controls and make the options show complex information. Let's leave rich select for our CD choice. I'll comment the combo and select. You can check them out in the code snippet at the end of this video. Next we can create a set of radio buttons. We can also create gender choice as a segmented control, like this. Date picker is used in a combination with UI related calendar that is initialized on clicking the control. It allows choosing a date and optionally the time in the calendar for their further usage. And we can set custom format for our date. And let's add a simple counter. It's a short one. Here's our calendar with formatted date and also a counter. But we can see the calendar label doesn't fit. Let's change label width to all elements. There exists a possibility to specify common configuration for all controls included in a form. Everything that is inside of elements config will affect all elements. Here you can add most common properties and event handlers globally, like label position, width, height, alignment and others. We can always change label width also individually. Let's remove this and while we're at it, let's center our form and remove the border around it. We can do that just by adding spacers and type clean. To add user friendliness to form interface, separated blocks can be set within it by adding headers with section type before control blocks or dividing a form into field sets. A field set is a collection of controls surrounded by a border from all sides. Webex Fieldset features a text label and a body where rows and columns arrays of controls are stored. Also let's look at how color picker looks. We can select the initial value in the hexadecimal or write the name of the color. It will return color hexadecimal code. We can choose the color in color board, which also can be initialized separately. Next let's make a simple slider. For simple title that displays current value and static text set the template via Webex template class. For more complex title that changes its text depending on the current value, you can define a function template. Let's create a section. Let's add a simple text area and a simple checkbox. Here's how it looks. There is also a toggle, a two-state button that can not only be clicked but also pressed. Hence it has two states, pressed and unpressed, which makes it look like checkbox that also has two states. Toggle values can be defined separately for each state. The component is fully customizable and can be used both as standalone view and as part of form or toolbar. I will comment this section and checkbox for now. 
And finally, let's add buttons, one to save and one to cancel. We can use WebEx column and row layout to arrange our control layout. Form elements can be divided into columns and rows with any level of complexity. Our form is growing, so we can add scroll property X, Y or X, Y together. Let's add a search input. Sometimes forms consist of multiple types of inputs that we can organize with the help of tab bar. Items of this component combine icons with text labels. Tabs can also be nested with images. This time we didn't need the scroll bar, but if we set fixed height to, for example, text area, we will see the scroll bar appears. So that's how it looks. In this video we looked at interface part of forms. There is a lot more to learn about interaction with form its elements and form data. Here are a few topics that we will discuss in detail later, like data loading, setting and getting values, clear form, complex data and others. Also, validation and few tips and tricks to create an amazing form.